So what is a bioreactor? This is a, a process or basically a, a type of um, composting that was created by D Dr. David Johnson and his wife. They call it the Johnson Sioux bioreactor method. Um, and it was basically, they were going through Elaine's courses, learning how to do this thermal composting pile and just got really labor intensive for them. So they decided to come up with a different way of getting the same thermophilic process going on without having to turn the pile and then realizing that they would need to finish it in a different way. So it kind of combines um, a couple of different styles of, of composting in that you do assemble the ingredients like you would um, for thermophilic type of composting. Um, and then you put it in that those ingredients into a form with basically big um, sewer tubes that create a form of a of um, an airflow channel in this material that you're going to uh, put around the tubes, and that creates an airflow channel so that it you don't have to turn it in order to get the oxygen into the pile, and there's no more than a foot between any one edge. But because it has many edges, there are some things that you need to know about um, the temperature zones that are ideal that we have found um, when when working with this bioreactor in order to get the, the best uh, result. And then after it's done with this thermophilic phase, because not all, hot, all parts have gone into a hot center like in a... Um, a thermophilic pile, you do have to finish it um, with, with worms. So there's some pros and cons about a bioreactor, and we'll just kind of go over um, what those are in the combining of the different types of styles that it um, kind of combines into one. So the benefits of a thermophilic compost is that um, Typically, people do this because it's the shortest time to a quick uh, usable compost at the end. It's the most labor-intensive and monitoring-intensive, and so it tends to be the one that people fail on the most because it's so intensive. It really requires a dedication of your time for about you know, three weeks while this thing is cooking. So, um, and, but because it's short, short time and, and labor intensive with all that heat in that pile, it kills those human and plant pathogens. It kills the root feeding nematodes and it kills the weed seeds via the heat. And that's um, kind of a critical component is killing of those weed seeds. Most farmers and um, gardeners do not want to have weed seeds in their compost. So that heat component is very important for that particular reason. And of course, when you're doing a thermophilic style, you're the one turning it to make sure that all that material gets through the hot center and get, comes up to temperature and kills those weed seeds. So you're the one doing that. In, in this type of bio reactor compost it's not it's a little different and then the benefits of vermicomposting is that it also does kill the human and plant pathogens, kills the root feeding nematodes as well. Uh, the worms provide the aeration as they're moving through and they do the work. They help decompose, um, help move the material around um, with the vermicomposting, but they do not, this kind of process is at ambient temperature because worms can't can't tolerate any high temperatures, so it will not be killing the weed seeds. So that's a fallback of vermicomposting, which is why this combination, um, this bioreactor kind of combines the, both of it, both the, the heat and the vermicomposting. So there's no turning with it. There are the tubes that you can see right there that are just there when you're filling the material to create that form for the um, aeration tubes basically and you'll remove these these particular plastic tubes and you'll just be left with a form that shape um, so because it does get up to temperature it does kill the pathogens and it kills the weed seeds it is labor and, and equipment intensive at the start you have to be able to make these forms and um, the receptacle for this bioreactor um, and and get all the material together and um, tediously like you would for a thermal composting pile because you don't want it to go anaerobic and you can go anaerobic even with all these um, air passageways. So it's, it is labor and equipment intensive at the start, but 
it is very, if you do it right, it can be very high quality end result. And so we've just found that we, if we marry this type of, of style of composting with um, Dr. Ingham's standards of bio, biologically complete, so we're paying attention to how we put these um, organic material together, we're paying attention to all of those little details that lend itself to biologically complete at the end, you get a very high quality end result for not much labor throughout the duration of, of the composting. But because it does utilize a vermicomposting to finish it at the end, it is not going to be as short as a thermophilic process because you're, you know, in that process, you're the one turning it and making sure everything gets to the hot center. With this one, you're not turning it um, you are bringing it up to temperature and holding it for a period of time and keeping it aerobic, but it then needs to be finished um, with worms at the end, the vermicomposting at the end. So it will be longer than just vermicomposting, but you will have killed the weed seeds and you will have lent, um, the whole process lends itself to a very high quality end result that we find. But there are some nuances and part of that will go over in um, the thermophilic phase as to um, why we make certain recommendations.